So there's five people. We're looking at second first breath. Yes, I do enjoy fine art. Thank you for noticing. There's a certain raw beauty to it that modern painters often fail to recreate. I always wanted to be an artist myself, but it'll be a long time before I can call myself that. I often say that patients are my canvas, but my job is more about restoration, obviously. I look at the damaged human mind, and bring them back to their former beauty. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring you. No, it's not that. It's just... It's been a difficult couple of days. I'd really like to go home. Of course, and go home you will. As soon as we've done this little assessment, okay, you probably know how it works. I've read in your file you used to be a nurse. Yes, I know very well how it works. You want to check if I'm nuts? Well, I wouldn't use that expression, obviously. But yes, we have to make sure you're safe and figure out how to help you. Also, as a nurse yourself, you know there's always paperwork involved. These forms won't fill themselves. Honestly, Susan, you have nothing to worry about. This is just a formality. I could tell straight away that you are not nuts. Fine. What would you like to know? I will answer all your questions. Then I'll go home, take a long shower, and catch up on sleep. Wonderful. Let's see then. Where do we begin? Weird. So, was it after the pills? She's awake, Doctor. Good evening. It's good to see you awake at last. You're in the Cedar Lake Hospital. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Could you confirm your name for me, please? Um, yeah, let's be straightforward. I got people to find. Susan Ashworth. Hello, Mrs. Ashworth. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're on the ward now. Your condition is stable. I can see your brain functions just fine and there's no permanent damage of any sort. We've checked your internal organs and they're fine too. You're a very lucky lady, Susan. You might experience extreme tiredness and lethargy for a couple of days, but that should soon pass. I would advise plenty of rest now. The nurses on this ward will take it from here. Please, let them know if you need anything. Apparently take need... care, Mrs. Ashworth. Apparently I need... Please, don't try to speak. What did you say? Don't worry, Mrs. Ashworth. Your arm is fine. No, no, no. There was nothing wrong with your arm, darling. Now calm down. Ah. Would you like me to get you some water? Let me get you a drink. I'll be back in a second. You know, she tried to kill herself. You shouldn't say she's lucky. If anything, she's unlucky. Because, like, you fucked up and now you get to be called crazy and sad. I'm sorry, Susan. Did I wake you? I have to take your blood pressure. Two seconds and I'm gone. I always hate when doctors do this. My name is Liz, by the way. I... Fuck you, Liz. I'm sorry. I know this isn't very nice. Believe me, I hate waking people up just for this. But being a nuisance is part of my stupid job, unfortunately. Oof, I hate this place. Your job sucks. Tell you what, Susan. Can I call you Susan? No. So anyway, I shouldn't say it, but you know I'm going to anyway. You are so lucky. It's crazy. 
You, doing what you'd done, and her, walking in, seeing what she saw. Fuck her. That was a chance. One in a million. I wanted to die, bitch. I'm not making any sense again, am I? I'm tired. They're working us to death here, you know. Modern day slavery. I'll work here. One day I'll tell them what I really think. I swear I will. It's what I want. Ah, and here it is. You've got the blood pressure of an 18 year old. Just wanted to say you're lucky, I think. And that I hope you've changed your mind about some things. Got to go, but I'll see you later. You take care, sweetheart, yeah? I'll kill you then myself. That's how I changed my mind. You left your arm thing on my arm. Where's my TV? Where's my remote to make my thing become a recliner? Hello, GLaDOS. I see the light. And it burns! Bad dream. Are you waking me up again? It was brilliant. I got what I wanted. N no. Just a dream like any other. Oh. That's fine then. I nearly woke you up, you see. So you tossing and turning as I came in here. You looked like you were having a horrible nightmare. I get nightmares sometimes. Good. I get them. And I can't wake up. Or well, sometimes I dream that I'm falling. Those are strange dreams. Because I think I like them. We can arrange I that. I keep falling, but I never fall. If you know what I mean. You never land. Never hit the ground. Never. Um, your name was Liz. Uh, what happened to me? What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then... I should not mention the field. The field would be a bad thing to mention. But I do want to know where my cat is. I woke up here, and I saw you. Can you now tell me who found me, and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My... daughter? Yes. Why? Why'd you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? Oh. I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied? It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. I kind of wanted to kill myself. She's on my list of five right now. How long... When was I going to go home? I gotta take a bath with a toaster. When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. That sucks. Look, I shouldn't say that, but you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you, and he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. Oh, he's gonna love the shit about the Queen of Maggots. Did you see this lying daughter of- Did you see this daughter of mine? 
No, sorry, Susan. Apparently, she came in the ambulance with you, but then she remembered something and had to go. I think someone mentioned she went in quite a hurry. Of course she did. She was worried I'd ask her what she was doing in my flat. Um, saving your life? She didn't save my life, she ruined my death. Do I really have to give her a benefit of the doubt just because of that? One would assume so. That girl is a hero. Maybe real heroes always leave before their identity is revealed. Or she was a burglar, attempting to steal from me. She stole my cap. Hmm. That's a possibility too. Have you got anything very precious in your flat? Cats. Lots of cats. Maybe. Get that one awesome clock there. You can't see a few of the numbers, but you know where they are anyway. It doesn't really work if you want to know if it's three or five or six, though. But the way the tail swings, you know, it's freaking awesome. How long have I been here? How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at seven in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. Fuckers. You went to the intensive care unit, where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. It's a terrible name. I call it Die Ward. Because all the patients who come here want to die. That's a better name. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. You have to be careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives. I don't need to say it is, but can you turn this light on? I have a feeling it'd be soothing. Uh, tell me about Dr. X. Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman, but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him, but you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you. But Dr. X usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some... problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? Oh yeah, they say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients, he doesn't care. As long as they're wearing a skirt. One girl I knew. Linda. I heard they had an affair. Stupid girl. But clearly he wants you now. Well, she left. And I never saw her again. Now why do you think that is? Dr. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. I don't know how these things work. But it must have been enough to shut her up. I bet he'll be more careful now. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one thing. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? He's a murderer? He's got a weird smell. Blood. What do you mean? He smells... funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Yes. Oh, thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. Like I'll tell it? you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? Things I wouldn't tell my mother about. And we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Sure. But it's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. Pills is never the way you, when you really want to kill yourself. You do something more drastic. Pills is a cry for attention. But I gotta point this out. A guy named X, who can really get into people's heads, are you fucking kidding me? His name is Xavier? Next. Uh, tell me about you. 
Tell me something more about yourself. Me? I'm a nobody. I'm just a hard-working girl. We all have to pay our bills somehow, right? I rent a room not far from here. There are two other girls living in the house. One is an auxiliary nurse, like me. She's always sick. The other one is a stripper. At least I think so. She's never home at night. Maybe she works at night, like you. Yeah, but I don't leave for work wearing red stockings and heels, do I? No, you're right. You're a real nurse, not some man's fantasy of one. I used to do all that for my boyfriend. You know, dress up as a sexy nurse and all. Well, I did it just once, really. He didn't like it that much. He didn't like me that much either. Broke up with me last Valentine's Day. Of all the days, he chose that one, eh? That's fucking sad. He never told me why, but I don't care anymore. That is really fucking sad. I already heard about Dr. X, so... Sleep! I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? That's cryptic. That... This is weird. We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. Hmm. That's a good chance to save. Okay, Dr. X. I guess I'll let you probe my mind. Let's stop. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your, your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? Why don't you let me talk, man? Um, oh, I can choose one. This is weird. I wonder what this choice will mean. Well, I guess I'll go with what I had. I kind of can. I kind of fit with two, so I'll go with this one. I was brought up without a father. I understand he wasn't there when you were growing up. Can you tell me why? What happened to him? He died in an accident. I'm not sure what exactly happened. All I know is that it was a car crash. Oh. I was told he died instantly. Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? I can't complain. My mum was great. She did her best to make up for the loss of my father. Me and her, we were like best friends, like soulmates. We did everything together. She passed away seven years ago. Her forever broken heart finally gave up. But she did give me a wonderful childhood, despite everything that happened. I will always love her for that. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes, and we will talk about something else. So I get to decide her history. 
That's into what the hell is that? I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this. What is that? A band? Clip on hospital wristbands. Got my name, date of birth, hospital number on it. Okay. Um, I don't know how that could help. Nope, not gonna lie down. You wanna get out. Pillow! Take the pillow. Nothing interesting under the pillow. Just looking at this pillow makes me wonder how many people have died with their heads on it. Oh, that's a grim thought. Wait, what was the rest of that? I'm sure it's been washed many times since then, but it still sends a chill down my spine. Come to think about it, I nearly died here myself. Wait, I did die for a moment, didn't I? That's true. Then again, you wanted it, so... The hell? Clock. What you gotta say, Clock? The needles are stuck at 1008. Probably broken, or maybe just needs new batteries. Well, that explains why time hasn't passed. It's a silly way to make things happen. Take a lot of gloves. I have lots of gloves. Drug chart. Need. List of drugs for patient in side room 2. I guess that's me then. I'm on a lot of sedatives. <laughs> Isn't that what causes this problem? The stuff they're giving me could knock out a horse and give it a headache for a week too. It also cause hallucinations and paranoia. How bizarre. Why would they want to give me all that? I'm not crazy. I know that for sure. If anyone's crazy here, it's someone who put me on all this medication for no good medical reason. You tried to kill yourself! That kind of classifies as crazy. Uh, take the flowers. I don't like flowers, especially... Chrysanthemums. 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 Okay. Oh, enter the next room. Hi. There's things here. Another clock. All the clocks are broken in here. Hi. I'm not sleeping in someone else's bed. Pillow. Look under the pillow. Nothing under the pillow. Guess this guy's in the john. Take gloves? Take one glove. Now I have a single glove and a lot of gloves. Because, you know, they're separate items, that means they don't count. A list of drugs for patients inside room 1 and some notes. According to this, her name is Anne Burton, 35 years of age. She's taking lots of sedatives and has a long history of drug abuse. It seems that on top of all that, she's taking met methadone for heroin withdrawal syndrome. At the bottom of the page, there's a note saying she's actually a private patient who's staying here out of her own free will. Lucky lady, I guess it won't be so easy for me to leave the board. Shit. She wasn't even in there. I can pretend to be Anne Burton. I'm not looking at the box, apparently. Uh, Zen. The toilet door. Okay, go in. Enter the toilet door. There's someone Hello. inside. Hello. I guess I should wait my turn. I. You gotta piss, you gotta piss. That must be Ann Burden. Flowers, door. What's this way? Well, hello. Hi, people. Nobody minds me going around? What's up, nurse? Where's Liz? Is Liz here? And who's Liz? That young nurse who was here last night. Black hair, very chatty. She said her name was Liz. Uh, I'm sorry. A lot of people come through here. I can't remember everyone's name. Can you return to your bed now, please? It's nearly time for your medication. I can't be chasing around after every single patient. Beg your pardon? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Wow, you're a bitch. I'm not going back to bed. Fuck you. Take. Please do not touch these. 
They are all confidential documents. Yeah? Well, maybe you shouldn't leave them out on the desk for everyone to see. If you are looking for something to read, we have some magazines for patients here. Thanks, but I think I'll pass. I dislike you. I want to find Liz. What do we got here? Examine. Patient files. They're piled up on the desk. Take. Please do not touch these. They are all comfort. Oh, is that? I'm sorry. Are you one of the housekeepers? Why did you dress up as a patient? I just can't stand mess, that's all. And there's no need to be sarcastic. Who's being sarcastic? You bitch! She said she was just tidying up. Well, I thought, I thought it would be the same thing. But, yeah, I don't like her. Hello, people. What's up? Where is the exit? Excuse me. Where's the exit? It's just down the corridor, ma'am. Thanks. I'll be on my way then. Can I see the discharge letter first? A discharge letter? What for? Some of our patients are under observation and aren't allowed out of the ward. For their own, sa own safety, of course. It sounds like we're prisoners here. It's for the patient's safety, ma'am. If you haven't been discharged by the doctors, I'm afraid I can't let you through. May I ask what your name is? Um, Anne Burden. Just let me go, asshole. Just let me go, asshole. There's no need for that attitude, ma'am. We're just doing our job here. Is that your excuse for being a brainless, fascist son of a bitch? You're taking away my freedom. Are you going to hit me next? These precautions are for your own safety, ma'am. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've got a job to do. Yeah, standing on the corner, looking stupid. Don't get too tired, will you? Bastards. The guy against the wall is much better at looking stupid than the guy standing up. He's a pro.